at this point, it's kind of up to you how to proceed. Um, we've gone through most of the major processes that we need to go through for creating our model, generating textures, things of that sort. And this video kind of touches on some more advanced usage of Modo, particularly the shader tree for textures and also for shading purposes. Uh, you may want to go into a 2D painting application uh, such as Photoshop if you want to, to continue doing your painting if that's what you're comfortable and used to doing, but I think you might find some interesting stuff here that could help extend your workflow um, however you currently work. So first off, I have my sickle item here in my scenes, my low polygon version, of course, and if you'll notice, he looks a little bit different. Um, if I come over to the shader tree, I have my sickle material and this new scene that I created. I'll expand this group, and if you'll notice, I have a mask one and two for baking, or mask one and two for shading group and a mask one and two for baking group. Baking group is off. I am going to expand the mask one and two for shading group because this is where we do all our creation of the shading. And if I expand this bakes group, I have two groups in there. I have combined images and combined low res. And above that, my normal map because I want my normal map always accessible, just always there. It's much easier for me that way. So I'll expand the combined images group. Now down here we have this desktop color. That's where the color map is coming from. And if I click on the image above it, this is our original baked image map before we layered everything up inside of Modo. So you can see um, it made a pretty dramatic difference as far as the quality of the textures. And I'll turn that off. I'll also shut off my decicle color here. Actually, I'll turn off the whole group of combined images and leave the bakes group on because I want the normal map present. Now in this group, this is color authoring. This is where I loaded up all those EXRs that I baked out in the last video. I have a diffuse coefficient and illumination total that is being multiplied on top of that, reflection shading um, in add mode, and I can start going through all these different layers that are being layered up um, using 32-bit floating point images and allows for an interesting compositing workflow, but you really can't understand what's going on, can you, looking through OpenGL right now? So again, Moto's render previewer awesomeness. I'll open up the material editor, get the render previewer, and all I need to do is turn on my color authoring group, and there it all is. I can see it all beautifully blended together. And if I turn on my bakes, um, actually, I don't even need to do that. I'll turn on the full color here. We can take a look at the original image through here as well. That's why I have that at the top. Okay, now let's turn off all these layers, every single one of them. You can see we have no texture at all. I'll turn on the diffuse coefficient. So that is diffuse amount and diffuse color in that one layer. Illumination total, adding the direct and indirect illumination. And reflection shading, this is where things begin to pop. This adds that reflection layer for us. And an overlay gradient in a group. Now, what this is doing is it's actually adding um, a nicely controlled ambient occlusion to everything. You can see how it dramatically impacts um, every aspect of the model, but you can see it most prominently here inside the hood and around the scales. Um, what I'm doing is I have my ambient occlusion set to an effect of a driver. And my gradient here inside this group, its input parameters set to the same thing, driver. So it's driving the ambient occlusion image. And um, so I can go ahead and modify this gradient here. You can see the effect it has, because it's being overlaid, uh, uh, or actually the whole group um, is just um, blend mode normal, but the gradient itself is being overlaid on top of everything outside the group as well. Um, okay, so let's come up and turn on the ambient occlusion here that just kind of adds some things. Um, more ambient occlusion. Uh, a hood mask that I just painted in, just using the paint tools on top of this low poly object. And a value gradient, because that's one thing about Dota 2. Um, all the characters and objects have this value, value gradient uh, associated with them, where the top of the, uh, the character is brighter than the bottom of the character. To kind of make the item or person or character pop out at you from the particular camera view in Dota 2. So it's something to keep in mind if you want your asset to be accepted. And we can control this just with a gradient that has its input parameter set to screen Y. And look, as I tweak and tune this, I'll make it visible so you can actually see it. Grab that one right there and pull it on down. There we go. We have adjustment over our gradient. If you want to add a new component, just middle click. There we go. And now we have a new handle. And you can edit your gradient inside the gradient editor with much greater control. 
There you go. All right. So really cool ways as far as being to being able to author your textures in um, floating point with floating point layered images inside of Moto. Really, really awesome. I think it's amazing. So let's come up to uh, the bakes layer, we'll leave the color authoring layer active. Let's turn on our combined images group. And all right, so go ahead and load up an image um, inside this group. I already have it loaded, the desicle color image right here. And what I need to do is select that image, make sure my low poly object is selected. And I want to bake to my render outputs, but I also want to make sure I have a diffuse coefficient output to bake to because my material, my shading material down here, is set to a diffuse amount of 100%, and I don't want any of the lighting captured. Right now, this, uh, this um, render previewer, all the render settings are set to super low quality. There's no ray tracing, there's no global illumination, only direct lights. I'm trying to kind of emulate the shading inside of Dota as best I can. You'll see more of that with the shading portion of this video. So for now, I'll just go ahead and turn this image off because we really actually don't need it. And item is selected, list, my UV map is selected, close down my preview render, and now I want to bake to render outputs. But first, before we do that, um, I do need to make one last change. My diffuse coefficient here, I wanna point this out. Um, by default, it will be uh, set up, okay, here's my render output, with an output gamma of one. I have it set to an output gamma of 2.2. Uh, make sure you do so if you are working with linear compositing of uh, of floating point images like this. That's a whole nother video to explain that, a lot to explain there, but just do it for now. All right, so diffuse coefficient, bake to render outputs, and there we go. We are quickly baking from that combined image group down to a flattened image, and now it's properly, uh, the gamma is properly set, so we have a nice bright image, and we can save the image out, save it as the desicle color image into the correct director directory. I already have it saved out, obviously, and I'll come down here, turn it on, and there we go. There's our final beautiful baked image right here. Now, what I can also do is if I wanted to, I could come into this combined low res and see I've got this sickle color low. Um, underneath clips, take a notice, it's uh, resolution is 256 by 256, and I could bake directly to that if I wanted to. However, I prefer to just go into Photoshop and down res um, as a last step. But you can see how nice it is to use Moto Shader Tree to actually create your textures, and this can go way, way further. Last thing I want to show you relating to that, um, open up the material editor really quickly, turn, uh, well, not my whole bakes layer off or group off, turn off the combined images, and check this out, reflection shading, right? I'll turn my OpenGL mode to um, shaded texture. Now I can see my selected texture nice and easily. Come over to the paint tools, paint brush, set the foreground color to black. I'll make this render previewer a little bit smaller. Look, I can even use the paint tools to augment, you know, um, like the reflection shading. And so I can paint out the reflection shading. All right, I'm gonna need to toggle that so you can see it. There you go. Now you can see the effect of that. and. I'll undo that really quickly so that paint stroke is there anymore and now it should update nicely there you go and so you can actually use the paint tools to improve and modify um, like the reflections on your object loads of control all right very cool now what we're going to talk about is how we go about the process of authoring the mask one and mask two textures so inside the sickle item i'll close down the um this uh, mask one and mask two for shading show close down the color authoring group and we're going to be focusing now on these authoring layers and spending a lot of time in the render previewer 